SUTV News, Ship mourns for the UNC Charlotte community. And an exclusive interview with President Lori Carter. All that and more right now. For joining us on SUTV News, I'm Avery Quinn. And I'm Isabella Marcelino. Well, this afternoon, President Carter sent an email to students detailing the waves SHIP has made since her inauguration last year. She also touched upon the importance of communication between students and the administration. I had the chance to sit down with President Carter and discuss her plan for SHIP success going forward. So I want to start out today by addressing the Slate article that was published on Tuesday that kind of talked about the administration and how they've been communicating with students on campus about certain issues and about a lot of the stuff. I want, just want to hear your response to that article. Absolutely. Um, in terms of communication with student, there are official um, sort of avenues for that as well as unofficial avenues. For all of our decisions, we really spend time talking with the SGA president, the uh, student trustee, I have a president student advisory group, the uh, RHA has president's hours. We have many avenues for open communication. I also have convos with Carter, which I just finished before I came over here, where any student in the university has the opportunity to sit down and talk with me. Um, Sometimes students want more information than we are legally able to provide, and I certainly understand that, but we have a responsibility to uphold the law and feel strongly about that. Um, can we have done better with, with some issues? Absolutely. Um, is there room to grow? Absolutely. But the, the suggestion that it is in intentionally hiding information is absolutely untrue. The other side of the, the coin, of course, is were all of the facts really revealed in those articles? Um, and that's a question. And as an administrator, and I'm sure with your other administrators as well that you work with, how do you feel, how important is communication to you when it comes to communicating with the university and its students? Communication is critical. And if you talk to any member of the executive management team, we meet on a weekly basis and every single week we talk about communication and how important it is for us to communicate in a timely manner, in a transparent manner, and to do it regularly and as often as possible. The challenge, of course, is if you over-communicate, people stop listening. And um, so we're trying to find that balance. And then what, what is the best avenue for communication with which audience? In the student advisory committee group today, some of the students said, well, you know, an email is not the best way to communicate with some student populations. You have to use social media to do that. And so we're trying to figure all of that out because it's important to us that the entire campus community understand where we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. The only way for our, us to accomplish our goals is to do it together, and we can only work together as if everyone knows the issues. There were also some students that said that the emails that are being sent out by the university and by you have been very positive and we're talking about all the good things that are happening in SHIP and that's amazing and I think that that's great and there's some students that are saying, well tell us about the bad things about SHIP, the negatives, the things that need to improve on. How, what would your response be to that? We talk about the negative and positive ways. Negative doesn't have to always be doom and gloom. We all need to understand that yes, SHIP has experienced serious enrollment declines for many years. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are challenges with the budget. I have said those things. I'm not going to say them over and over again. I'm going to talk with the ways that w about the ways that we can actually move the institution forward. This is a great university. Why should I spend time in negativity when there are so many positive things happening here? Yeah, I fully agree. So moving forward, we have had an interesting week, we have had a lot going on, and there has been, you know, I don't want to say hate, but there has been a lot of differences with students and the administration. How do we move forward from this? We only move forward through communication, conversation, uh, mutual respect, and understanding that we can only accomplish our goals together. 
The divisiveness is not something that's going to help us. Mm -hmm. So why engage in that? Let's engage in something that's positive for SHIP. Let's engage in something that's going to help our students. And for students who are looking for an avenue to express their opinion, to express their views, and to kind of tell the administration how they're truly feeling, how do you tell them to go about that? There, as I said at the beginning, there are many ways to do that. Come to the RHA President's Hours. Those are mm -hmm. open dialogues that I have with students on a quarterly basis. Any student is invited to participate in that process and bring up any issue. I have a student advisory group. Speak to any member of that group. They are representatives from many, many different groups across campus, and they're happy to talk with students and gain their, their uh, opinions. Schedule a convo with Carter. And if you can't get into a convo, I do meet with students outside of the convos. Mm -hmm. I try to make myself very accessible. I also attend student activities, student events. Um, I walk across campus and really all try to engage in conversation with those students at all of those times. You don't have to schedule a time to have a conversation. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with me and kind of clearing the air today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. When we come back, UNC Charlotte mourns the victims of Tuesday's shooting. And we'll share ways students can cope with stress. Yeah. Tragedy strikes at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Two are dead and four injured after shots were fired in an academic building. CNN's John Lornick reports. Police swarming the University of North Carolina at Charlotte campus Tuesday evening. All I remember was hearing three shots, just three shots, and I went down. Every, and the guy next to me got shot. It was just really scary. Shortly before 6 p.m., the campus went on lockdown after shots were fired in a classroom setting. We mourn the loss of life. We pray for those who are being treated at the hospital right now. Chancellor Philip Dubois calling this the saddest day in UNC Charlotte's history. The Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department has identified the suspect as Tristan Terrell. The gunman was found and disarmed quickly since many officers were already in the vicinity preparing for a Waka Flocka concert on campus. We trained for this type of an incident and we were able to get to the building and our officers immediately, one officer immediately went to the suspect to take him down. All campus activities are canceled through the weekend. I know the people in this community and they will be here for each other. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Three people were critically injured and one has minor injuries. The, victim have, the victims have not been identified. Students of the university held a candlelight vigil for the victims Wednesday night. With finals around the corner and some students looking for internships, jobs, and careers, things can get pretty stressful. Stress can be a good motivator, but too much stress can have a very harmful effect on your body if not managed properly. The Center for Disease Control advises when dealing with high levels of stress to avoid drugs and alcohol, make time for friends and loved ones, eat healthy, and exercise. If you're looking for more ways to help you deal with stress, you can go to ship.edu slash social work slash self care. And speaking of stress, finals week is only a few days away. SUTV's Javon Singleton asked SHIP students how they are preparing for, last week, for the last week of classes. Let's see what they had to say. Uh, a lot of crying. <laughs> Uh, a lot of sleeping when I shouldn't be, and not a lot of studying. Oh my God, we're taking this so seriously. Studying hours on hours. Am I right? You're right, you're right, baby. Hours right. on hours studying. Hours on hours, baby. Go to the library on the quiet floor and put headphones in and study all my information that I have to. Hey, you grind it. Come here, you try and get the best grade oh, possible. Come here. What you, what you doing for finals week? What you doing Study, for man. Week? Study, man. Study, yeah. Taking it serious. Jack, Jack boy. boy. Praying to God. Yeah, boy. Chugging lots of coffee. Oh, all hours of the day. All studying, day. straight study, eating, getting a good diet, lifting some weights, playing some all basketball. Day. You know, I'm hitting the books hard. I'm starting studying already. I'm finishing up some papers. You know, I'm really getting this grind going. <laughs> I'm taking it seriously. <laughs> hey, hey. I mean, all nope. day. So, Avery, this is our last finals week ever. How are you preparing for it? Well, I would say I started preparing, but I kind of procrastinated on some papers, <laughs> other things. But when I'm done with that, which will happen soon, I swear. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, then I'll, you know, make some <laughs> note cards, read some books of 
some sort. Oh, good. Yeah, you? Good. Um, I only have one final, which is the best way to end my senior year. One final, and then that's it. Well, there's no excuse if you don't get an A, then. Don't stress me out. <laughs> well, at the end of each April, SHIP celebrates Earth Day and Stewardship Week. SGTV's Nolan Huffman is recapping last week's Earth Day celebration in this week's Know Your SHIP. Nolan? This week on Know Your SHIP, on Sunday, a group of professors and students at SHIP were at the corner of Fogelsander and Bird Run Roads planting 40 fruit trees located around a piece of land estimated to be 65 feet by 150 feet. This area is once a field of grass along with a pavilion that has seen better days. The group enhanced the land with apple, pear, cherry, plum, peaches, nectarine, and pluwa trees. The newly named Shippensburg University Orchard is dedicated to these beautiful trees, which should sprout in a couple of years. That's it for this week's Know Your Ship. If you have any questions or concerns about SHIP, email our web director, Tyler Danson, at td5685 at ship.edu or comment on our Facebook, SUTV News. I'm Nolan Hoffman. Back to you guys at the desk. When we come back in world news, flash flood warnings across the U.S. And learn why breakfast is still the most important meal of the day. A sunrise that is out of this world. SUTV's Paige Ahrensmeyer has this week's world news. Paige. The threat of severe storms continues this afternoon. Nearly 20 million people remain under the flash flood watch from Texas to Illinois. CNN's Camilla Bernal is in Davenport, Iowa, covering the devastated communities. The biggest worry right now is the rising water. Just in the last couple of hours that we've been here, we've seen that water rise little by little. And people in this area, business owners, trying to do all they can to keep that water out. As you can see, I'm already standing in a couple of inches of water. This is what the entire downtown area looks like. And so people are trying to pump out the water, doing everything they can. And I wanted to show you uh, this building behind me. We're told that it's a recently renovated building, so they tried to keep the water out by putting another barrier, but right now it seems like that did not help to keep the water out. Crews draining the water. This is the worst I've seen it since I was a kid. Men on boats salvaging what they can. Downtown Davenport left looking like a lake. I heard him yell, the levee broke. Mike Osborne lost his business on the same day he planned to hold his grand opening. Well, by the time I got back, uh, about a block, walked back, uh, the water was about four feet deep. In the next town over, flooding did not stop the Bettendorf firefighters from doing their duty. With waters up to their chest, these men battled a burning garage just 100 yards from the Mississippi River. Recent heavy rain and melting snow is putting several Riverside communities at risk. The Mississippi, Missouri, and Illinois rivers are all expected to rise to dangerous levels in the next few days. Voluntary evacuations are underway along parts of the Missouri River. It's expected to crest 13 feet above the flood stage, and parts of Illinois are already feeling the impact of the rains. Meanwhile, back in Davenport, people are beginning to look at what comes next. I'm pretty sure we all come together, we all get together, we all clean it up, it'll be back to new. And Mark, that man you just heard from being very positive, saying they will clean up and move on, but authorities nonetheless telling people to continue to be careful. They're asking people to continue to get sandbags and just to be extra cautious because they don't want communities downriver to look like what this downtown area looks like. Reporting in Davenport, Iowa, I'm Camila Bernal. Back to you. This week, Boeing admitted one of the safety features of its 737 MAX airplanes was not activated on all of its jets. A warning called the Disagree Alert is supposed to be standard on all of the aircrafts. Another warning called the Angle of Attack Indicator is optional. Boeing says the Disagree Alert was mistakenly not activated on the aircrafts that did not have the optional Angle of Attack Indicator. According to Boeing, neither alert is necessary for the safe operation of the airplanes. However, investigators in Indonesia say faulty data from an angle of attack sensor led to the October crash that killed 189 people. The 737 MAX that crashed in Ethiopia recently, killing 157 people, is also linked to faulty data from an angle of attack sensor. And now check this out. If you think sunsets on the beach are pretty, they're nothing compared to on Mars. NASA's InSight lander caught these spectacular images. Now there's two formats that NASA released. 
raw and color corrected. Raw versions show more detail, but color corrected are more accurate to how the human eye would see it. Another interesting detail you might notice is the sun. It appears two thirds smaller than how we see it on Earth. And finally today, it's true that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but recently that statement is truer than ever. And for those college students that say you don't have time to eat in the morning, listen up. CNN's Jim Dinan has our health raid. You might want to think twice about skipping breakfast. Whether you eat breakfast could be linked to a higher risk of dying from heart disease. That's according to a new study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Researchers found that people who never eat breakfast had an 87% higher risk of dying from a cardiovascular disease compared with people who start each day with a meal. Researchers say the link was significant and independent of socioeconomic status, body mass index, and cardiovascular risk. The authors say the research provides evidence to that breakfast may in fact be the most important meal of the day. Researchers say the study links skipping breakfast to heart disease risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, and lipid disorders. Experts point out that meal skipping in the study is not the same as practicing intermittent fasting. That's when you cycle between several hours of not eating and then have regular meals in a smaller time window. Some studies suggest intermittent fasting can reduce the risk of obesity and its related diseases such as diabetes and cancer. For today's Health Minute, I'm James Dynan. According to the latest figure from the World Health Organization, cardiovascular disease, specifically heart disease and stroke, is the leading cause of death in the world. That's all I have for you this week. See you guys next time. Lavery, I don't know about you. I'm going to be eating breakfast a lot more now. Oh, I agree. <laughs> Omelets, pancakes. I'm sure it's all healthy I mean, for me. I mean, smothering syrup. <laughs> it's good for me. We just had someone in the, in, the, in the room here say Century has an amazing breakfast. Oh, they so do. I can back that up. up sometime. <laughs> well, when we come back in entertainment, a record-breaking single from America's Pop Princess. And Joe Jonas is officially off the market. Thought there was going to be a storm today. And then there was for like a minute. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing just went away. And then it became a hot, beautiful, sunny day. Yeah, but the hot rain, I don't like it when it's super, super hot and muggy and all that rain. That's not enjoyable. Well, I enjoy the, <laughs> I enjoy the cool off. Let's send it over to Jillian to see if that rain's going to keep coming. After the forecast from last week, you guys are probably hoping I'll deliver some good news, and I promise to do that. However, we do have to get through some bad news first. So let's get that out of the way. Tonight, there's going to be the possibility for some rain and a thunderstorm, but otherwise, just mostly cloudy skies. Then unfortunately for Friday, the skies are going to open up from the heavens and hit us hard with some thunderstorms in the afternoon. Then for the weekend, that rain isn't going to let up anytime soon, but hey, that means we'll have plenty of time to study indoors for finals week. Monday will be everyone's favorite day as the clouds will, will part and it'll be sunny and warm. And the same will go for Tuesday and Wednesday to finish out the forecast. So I wouldn't be too worried about the rain that's coming because the sun is definitely on its way for next week. And that'll do it for this week's weather. Let's send it over to Mike Smith with entertainment. The first official trailer for the live action Sonic the Hedgehog movie was released earlier this week. The trailer finally gave fans a look at what Sonic looks like on the big screen, as well as his nemesis, Dr. Robotnik. According to the trailer, Sonic is an extraterrestrial visitor to Earth and must work with a police officer to save the world while avoiding the military who wish to capture him. With big names like Ben Schwartz, Jim Carrey, and James Marsden, the movie cannot get here fast enough. Sonic the Hedgehog will hit theaters on November 8th. Joe Jonas and Sophie Turner finally tied the knot. After the Billboard Music Awards, where the Jonas Brothers performed for the first time since, return, since reuniting, Joe and Sophie hit up a local wedding chapel. Many artists, including Khaled, Diplo, and Dan and Shay, were there to support them, along with family members. Diplo went live on Instagram, showing the couple reciting their vows. And sadly, early Monday morning, John Singleton was taken off of life support after suffering a major stroke earlier in April. Singleton was an Emmy and Oscar-nominated director, producer, and screenwriter. He was most famous for his film Boys in the Hood and Snowfall. Singleton passed away peacefully, surrounded by his family and friends. And lastly tonight, Taylor Swift is breaking records on YouTube. Twi uh, Swift dropped her music video for the song Me on Friday. This music video broke the record for being the most watched visual on, uh, from a solo or female artist in history. 
is the in the first 24 hours the video got 65.2 million views, breaking Ariana Grande's Thank You Next record of 55 million views. Swift included clues to what her new album is called in her song. And that's all I have for entertainment. Let's go back to the desk. When we come back in sports, track records are broken and softball is back in the playoffs. Jake Rom has more after the break. Men's and women's track and field were at home Saturday for the annual Paul Kaiser Classic. Let's start on the women's side. Sophomore Ariel Jones had a personal best in the high jump with a height of 5 feet 6 inches. And in the field, Morgan DeFloya continues to dominate the javelin as she won the meet with a distance of 144 feet 9 inches. And in the men, well, on, the, on their side, they had a lot of career performances. Let's start on the track. Redshirt junior Charles Bowman broke a 35-year-old school record. In the 110 hurdles, posting an NCAA provisional time of 14.24 seconds. And the men's 4x100 team of Calvin Dennis, Chris Craig, Drew Stanford, and Roland Miles broke a school record as well. Their team, or their time, that is, of 40.87 seconds broke the previous record by 8 hundredths of a second and ranks the team 22nd in the country. Now to the field. Freshman standout Shamar Jenkins continues an impressive freshman campaign. Jenkins finally gets over the 50-foot mark in the triple jump, jumping 51 feet and coming up a half a foot short of the school record. He also ranks fourth in the nation in that event. Both the men and the women's track and field team will be on the road this weekend at Penn State for the Jim Thorpe invite. Ship Softball had an early morning in Quakerstown today in their second game of the PSAC playoffs. The Raiders looked to avoid elimination after losing 5-2 yesterday against Lockhaven. Shippensburg took the field at 9 a.m. against Edinburgh, and Ship came out swinging. Freshman Grace Palmieri hit a grand slam in the top of the first inning. She would go on to drive in two more runs later in the game, and the Raiders would go on to win 11-2. Unfortunately, softball has been eliminated by Westchester, finishing their PSAC tournament with a record of 1-2. Now, Shippensburg Baseball took a series over Mansfield this weekend, winning three of four games. And on Saturday, Ship blanked Mansfield on Military Appreciation Day, 3-0 and 5-0. And senior Zach Sims threw his first shutout of the season, striking out 10 batters. In the second game of the series, senior pitcher Michael Hope achieved his second shutout of the season with double-digit strikeouts. And Saturday marked the second time this season that Shippensburg had posted shutouts in both games of a PSAC East doubleheader. The Raiders split Sunday's doubleheader, winning 3-2 in the first game and losing 5-4 in the second game. In game three of the series, the Raiders scored the winning run off of a bunt that caused a throwing error. And senior Jack Gortzen, he hit two solo home, run, home runs in the, in the second game, but unfortunately it was just not enough for the Raiders, and they lost the last game of the series. Ship faces East Stroudsburg away. That's on Friday. And there are a lot of events in track and field, the 100-meter dash, long jump, shot put. The list goes on. But one event stands out above them all when it comes to the history at Ship. Let's take a look. Javelin's a real niche kind of thing. Not a lot of people kind of know what it is, and very few people kind of understand it. Shippensburg University has a rich sports history, but one sport in particular, the javelin throw. This is my 19th year or 20th year coaching, and we've had a javelin throw at Nationals, I think, all but two years. The history definitely talked for it. Like, the proof is kind of in the pudding. Um, I mean, they, you hear what, you can see their results online. You hear what they're able to do. The history plays a big role, but the coaching? goes a long way. He's very nitpicky, so he will pick out different things from your throw to improve them. Working alongside your coach, it's really not only humbling, but exciting, because every day at practice, you have an opportunity to make yourself that much better. It looks easy, just a sticky throw like a baseball or a football. But what if I told you there's a lot more that goes behind throwing one of these javelins than you think? In golf, for the most part, you're doing like a singular movement, and you're just trying to replicate it and perfect it. Um, javelin's the same thing, you know, the sector is the same size, the javelin's the same size, the same weight. The runway is basically the same, so the only difference is the person throwing it. So you're just trying to work on getting, like, stronger, faster, um, more elastic, and just getting, like, better positions. The technique, the coaching, and the mindset all needs to throw a stick. In Shippensburg, Jake Rahm, SUTV Sports. Well, guys, um, you just saw the package. Have you guys even heard of a javelin, even maybe thrown a javelin, possibly? I've I mean, heard of it. <laughs> Can't say I've thrown it. I feel like it would be a lot 
bigger than me. It's, it's about eight feet tall for yep. a men's mm -hmm. and about six about for women. Five. So it's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's it, it towers <laughs> over. Even, even the, the, the tallest of, of people here on campus, me and Avery, it, it towers over us as well. Yeah. So, I, mean, I actually threw javelin sophomore year of high school. Did you really? And then uh, my coach said it was a lost cause and told me to focus <laughs> on uh, shot put and discus. So <laughs> yeah, that was my experience with javelin. But you threw, oh didn't goodness. you? I did. I did. Th I threw three years here at Shippensburg. Uh, okay. Some injuries on the elbow kind of took me out of it, but uh, it was awesome. I mean, it's it's interesting what goes into that. A lot of people think it's like, hey, you throw it like a baseball, you throw it like right. a football, like you saw in my stand up there. But it, it, there's a lot more that goes into it, and that package doesn't even do it justice. There's so much more that goes into throwing javelin, but I I'll stop there. Those <laughs> people are amazing. I, I give it to them. Well, when we come back, get them while they're hot. Starbucks has new color changing cups. People are freaking out about Starbucks' new color-changing cups. Starbucks launched the cups Monday, and they're already selling out. The new cups are temperature-sensitive, so you can put something cold in them. They are magically transformed into ombre shades. There are five colors, plus straws and lids, and they cost $16.95 a pack. But people are also selling them on eBay for higher prices. And these don't just look good in your hand, they're also eco-friendly. Stop by any Starbucks location with the tumbler and score 10 cents off an iced order. That is, if you can get your hands on one. I think 10 cents isn't enough. 10 cents? I would say like I 50 mean, cents, maybe. Maybe more. I'm maybe a saying dollar? a dollar. I mean, like. <laughs> I'm not a big Starbucks fan, but it's, it's pretty pricey. Over it is pricey. I'm not going to lie. Have you guys had the, the lemonade with the strawberry refresher? I think I might need to invest in one of those tumblers. <laughs> they're so good. That's going to be your senior gift from me. I'll make sure I get it uh, wow. for you. If I can, while well, I get them while oh, they're no, hot. Yeah, <laughs> if you can get your hands on them. Yeah, that's true. You have to <laughs> that's it for SUTV News. I'm Avery Quinn. And I'm Isabella Marcelino. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SUTV News. And check out our website, SUTVNews.com. We'll see you next time.